Good Monday morning. It's the day of the eclipse. This is Dr. Bill Williams on the Influencers Podcast. Everybody's looking up in the sky, but we're looking in our computer monitors and we're looking across and we're doing our work. We're saying, hey, who is on our Influencer Podcast today? Well, it's none other than Andrew Morgans, CEO of Marknology, talking to you from Kansas City, Missouri, right? Let's bring on Mr. Andrew Morgans. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Uh, happy to be here. I'm glad you did join us on the Eclipse Day. You know, whether the world ends today or not, we'll still be here. <laughs> glad we can share some time together. The well, last thing we be did here. before the Eclipse, I hope it's not the end times. I think we're on the right track. Maybe we'll make it another day. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if I go talking business when I go. So, you know, I live and breathe it. Why not? Let's know, let the audience know about Marknology. This is something that you founded. You were the CEO. Uh, you're, you're big in the, the business of uh, what I've come to see is a Amazon agency, brand acceleration, brand builder. You even do a lot of investing. You know, you're, you're growing your portfolio. So you've got a lot to share with us. This is an entrepreneur crowd that listens to the Influencer Podcast. I bet you can share a lot that's going to excite them today. So let's get going. Tell us about how to start it out. Okay. So uh, Marknology turns 11 this year in 2024. Uh, so 11 years old as a company, 11 years old as a full-time entrepreneur. Um, it was my first company I started and it's, and it's, you know, it's my baby for sure. Essentially, we were very early. Um, we were very early in the Amazon space or what they call the marketplace space now, uh, where Walmart, Chewy, mm -hmm. Target, Amazon.com. Um, I was an e-commerce manager by day. I started side, I started a side hustle and uh, essentially started getting more and more projects at that time. People just needing help um, launching products on Amazon, uh, manufacturers trying to go direct on Amazon, ultimately companies trying to learn how to navigate the modern marketplace that is Amazon, Target, Walmart, Chewy.com, um, everything from, from photography to um, the design of the pages to understanding map pricing and pricing strategies, how you're packaging your products, understanding why you're getting returns, how to fix, you know, how to fix stuff from breaking, how to fix, uh, you know, mishaps with shipments, um, understanding your profitability, uh, expanding internationally. You know, we ultimately come in and systematically help, you know, uh, either brands already established or brands looking to get started or brands just trying to take it to the next level. Um, there's a team of 35 of us, uh, you know, so we've got kind of a system here, different pockets, you know, of, of the business that we're helping or assisting with. But ultimately, we come in as business consultants and um, help them navigate, help them navigate the Amazon train. So with 35 people, you've got, you know, a, a lot of irons in the fire in a lot of places with a lot of companies. So how many uh, probably how many do you keep actively working with clients at one time? So I think we're I think our number is a little over 350 clients or brands we've worked with in, in the last 10 years or so. Um, we have about 40 that we work with on a monthly basis everywhere, all the way up to Fortune 50 companies. Uh, we have a Fortune 50 company all the way down to mom and pop shops, uh, you know, that just have a great product that, that are trying to expand, you know, on Amazon or e-commerce. So kind of run the gambit and I've really sharpened our teeth um you know bootstrapped this business so I was working with smaller brands at the beginning and i've just been doing it 10 years now where we've um we've kind of moved up market and, and we're trying to work with you know manufacturers and brands that are already established and just really want to either launch on amazon or, or grow on amazon so less of the like you know from scratch brands um but that's what we do as far as a team uh in the agency space i also own a 3pl and a warehouse uh so we do fulfillment for websites for amazon things like that here in kansas city it's just as i've been building my own brands and investing in my own brands i wanted to be able to control that that piece of the business which is um pick pack ship prepping the products trying new things adding inserts adding coupons adding in a free sample of something um you can just be extra creative in the warehouse when it comes to shipping your product um that's your chance. It's, one, it's a big part of your profitability. And it's a big part of 
your opportunity to um, engage with your customers post purchase. So, you know, the things you well, pre purchase too, depending on how you're packaging it, but you know, they get the, they get the box. If it's broken, that's a bad experience. If something's spilt over the rest of their stuff, it's a bad experience. If you want to introduce them as who you are as a company, especially if you're selling on Amazon, there's not a lot of opportunities to do that. You can have some insert cards, your packaging can have QR codes on it, things like that. Um, so from warehousing, all the way up to um, you know how it how it displays on, online. Um, that's what we're into. Excellent. It's good to know that because you know I've had a lot of conversations recently with three PO companies and understanding their growth cycle and their needs. You know, having new clients coming in and warehousing with them is the lifeblood of a three PO. Yes, sir. And because you can market, help them market better with your insights, then uh, you have a, like a double edge uh, benefit from being in that space. I can see that. Yep. That's what I'm trying to do. And I, I do a lot of things for myself. So um, I think that's a, a value add that we bring to the table is like, you know, whatever I'm trying to do for another brand, I I'm doing it for myself from um, giving them advice on what to do in the warehouse or, or pricing all the way to, what partners I'm using and what marketplaces I'm selling on. Am I selling on Shopify or Target or Walmart or Chewy? You know, I've got, um, I've actually got nine companies now that I own, um, direct to consumer brands, like product based brands and, um, you know, really started the warehouse for them. And then it's just grown to, um, you know, be a, be a bigger project, which is to, you know, work with some of the brands that we're also working with on the marketing side. Well, it sounds like a winning proposition. Now, tell me a little bit about something that did not work. Did you have a failure story that led you to uh, recover nicely? Well, um, <clears throat> Bill, I'll share too. Uh, you know, I had, it's all about perspective, how you see failures, right? So I could, I could be the silver lining playbook right now and just, you know, remix every failure. But I, I think two that stand out to me would be um one which was what helped me start my business was I, I went through a divorce uh pretty young you know i was just raised um i was raised with a big heart fell in love real young you know i had been with her a few years and fell in love it just didn't work out and uh broke my heart absolutely broke my heart and um out of that is like the man i am today so out of that really just i wanted to be better you know at that time i wanted to uh, pull myself back up and um, that's when I started side hustling and then that's when it turned into my business. And then, you know, kind of that drive just pushed me to be a, a better man, work on more things, be, be better, um, be better than before. And so that was, that was one failure. I consider it a failure. Uh, and another one would be just, uh, probably with some partners, uh, in the business world, like just choosing some, some relationships that weren't the best fit or that didn't have the best guidelines or that didn't have the best communication or, shouldn't have been a relationship in the first place in business. And, um, you know, I urge any young entrepreneurs, uh, or, or even, even experienced entrepreneurs, you know, just to move with caution when you're choosing partners. And I think it's just part of the business. Like, so it's a matter of, of limiting exposure if you can, um, you know, you could have an amazing partner and then life just, life just goes sideways and then it changes on things. So almost every, almost all the failures that I, I feel in my heart that felt like real daggers were, were relationship based. I think jumping in too quick or getting involved before you really knew the person, the business person, and they didn't turn out to be a long-term connection. It, it was over and done. So that's a, that's a common story, but it's a good story that young people looking to get into business should go a little slow Check it out before you jump in with something that's going to cost you in the long run. Yeah. Haven't we all done that? Yeah, we've all done it. Um, <clears throat> if somebody's doing business online, uh, you, your experience sees a lot of people that don't make it, that don't do well. What are the reasons you're seeing them fail? Well, if I got to give three, I would say, um, you know, one of the top three reasons I think people fail is they don't know their numbers. Um, and, you know, I've gotten into businesses doing several million dollars and I get in there and they still don't know their numbers. Uh, you know, and I, I'm just like, how is this happening? I don't know how long it will last type of thing. You know, you just you have to know this is a numbers game. I am an artist. I'm a creative by nature. I'm a musician. 
I've still had to get really, really good at math and my numbers to be good at business. Like, you know, even though I'm, I tend to be that way, just understanding, you know, uh, you know, if you're importing product from China, understanding your tariffs, understanding your landed costs, understanding your storage fees, understanding, um, you know, your Amazon fees, your marketplace fees, you got to understand your numbers to be able to make good business decisions um, and be able to, to execute. And sometimes knowing your numbers keeps you from even starting. You, it's just not the right product or it's not the right opportunity. And the numbers should tell you that. So number one would be um, not knowing their numbers. I think number two, uh, when it comes to Amazon is uh, they're, they're poor or they have poor skills or a bad supply chain. So um, whether that's not stocking enough product under, you know, too long of uh, supply chain issues, bringing it from China instead of having it stored here in a 3PL so they can restock, things like that. I would say since the pandemic, the number one reason I've, I've lost with brands or not been successful has been their inability to keep products stocked. Um, maybe retail is growing and they punish Amazon, whatever the case is, inventory, inventory, inventory. That's the first three commandments of, of, of the Amazon uh, 10 commandments is, is have your inventory stocked. And then I think the third one is, um, you know, people get either like if I could word it like they get too stuck in their ways, uh, even with like e-commerce, they might think like they it's just moving so fast and they'll do something that, you know, they'll hold on to something that maybe was the truth five years ago, which doesn't seem like that long because time flies. Uh, but instead of like, you know, opening up their perspective uh, or being willing to try new things to me, it's like to be successful in e-commerce, which is really the perspective I'm coming from is um, you have to innovate and you have to A-B test. You have to be A-B testing all the time, all the time, even when it's working. You still need to be A-B testing so that you don't get to a point where it stopped working and now you don't know what to do. You've got a couple other tools that you can pull from. So I think it's uh, the, the resistance to change and the resistance to spending money to test new things. Yeah, don't fall in love with what worked yesterday because it probably won't tomorrow. Seriously. But E-commerce moves so fast. Yeah, that's, that was a great uh, advice to give to people because every one of them is true. Every one of them. And you, you're motivated, even though you're successful, you're motivated to do more and more. What's the uh, thing behind your motivation? Well, Bill, I've, uh, I've honestly lost it a few times during the years. Uh, you know, I've been doing this 11 years. Uh, I've been staying in the same vertical as well. So, uh, like, you know, e-commerce is my passion. Um, there's been a few times when I've accomplished goals and actually found myself kind of lost, uh, kind of lost with my motivation. Like, well, you know, I'm not mo really money motivated. Um, and each time, you know, I, I had to kind of recenter and figure out what it was. And for me, it's, um, it's my family. It's my family. Um, uh, my mom, my dad, my sisters, we do this, you know, I, I built this for them. Um, you know, and sometimes, uh, you can lose that lose that focus. Like, why, why am I working so hard? Why am I doing this? And then outside of my immediate family, it grew to just be, um, everyone that's building this with me, my team, um, you know, whoever's engaged with Mark Knowledge and the brands I'm building, it really is like an extended family here. And, um, you know, we're doing it for each other to just have a better quality of life. We work really hard on our culture. Um, you know, just to be people that support each other in all aspects, not just in the workplace. And, um, you know, I just always recenter and be like, look, I don't want to let let my team down. I don't want to let anybody down, um, you know, stay focused and, and um, you know, stay motivated. Yeah, I totally agree with you. You know, my my dental business, 50 years of being a dentist was a family business. And we, we had my wife, my sister in law, many cousins, many in our family just kind of rotated in and out over the 50 years and life cycles happen and if you're doing it for any other reason than your family, you're probably not telling the truth when you, when you stay long and strong in one business. <clears throat> Tell me about your company motto, Markology, and how did that name come about? So uh, I get called Mark more often than not. Uh, but to, to people's surprise, I didn't name the company after myself. Um, I actually was working at a medium-sized toy retailer. They were kind of a, about a 80-year-old company. Um, I was the e-commerce manager. This is before I started Marknology. And uh, I was hired by the technology department. So e-commerce at that time didn't have its own department. It was hired by like the chief, you know, CTO. And But I worked with marketing pretty much every day. So I'm, I'm the e-commerce manager with the technology team, but working with the marketing company, marketing team. 
And every so often, maybe once a month, twice a month, I would host a lunch to bring our teams together because we had to work together all the time. And I would call it the Marknology Lunch, a mixture of marketing and technology. Yeah. And uh, I just felt like e-commerce, the e-commerce guy sat in the middle of these two teams and you had to be good at both of them to be successful. And um, so Marknology just being a fun play on words of, uh, you know, a, a mixture of marketing and technology. Marketing technology. Good job. It stands Thank out. It does. Uh, tell us the secret of why should somebody buy from you, you know, your company, Marknology? Well, what I can say is that I guarantee you've already been buying from brands that I've been successful with on Amazon through the last 11 years. If you've bought anything on Amazon, um, you know, we've touched a lot of major brands. Uh, you know, there's a there's a food company we've worked with that's the biggest in the world. And if you've had any of those products, well, then you have probably bought something from me. So I'm just saying as a as a fun little thing here, you probably already bought from me and don't even nice. know. it, And that's why <laughs> that's why you should. Um, I've been doing this a very, very long time in regards to what we do. And so, you know, if you're looking to be successful on Amazon or in the e-commerce landscape, we've just, you know, between me and my, my leadership team, which is my sisters, we've probably got 60,000 hours on Amazon. Um, maybe more than that. Uh, we, we've just been at this a long time working really hard. And so besides that, um, you know, besides reputation, besides experience, besides skill, um, I think we're just a fun team to, to, to be a part of. I think uh, whenever you're doing e-commerce or entrepreneurship, a lot of times it's you or maybe you plus a couple. Uh, maybe if you're a brand, it's it's you in the marketing department plus one or two at most usually. And um, working with Marknology, I think you get to be, you know, there's probably five or six of us that you would see on a regular basis. And, um, you know, just it just makes this entrepreneur thing, this e-commerce thing a little bit more human. Uh, to work with people and talk with people and feel like you're moving toward the same mission. And I think that's the intangible that we bring to, to any partnership is just uh, good people to work with um, that know their stuff and, and have fun doing it. Well, I, I really believe my wife must know you already because we get an Amazon package every day. You've that's been, what I'm saying. You've been direct shipping her for a long time. <laughs> Who would be your ideal client? What size business? Uh, what verticals? Well, I, I'm definitely the person that's like, uh, I love everybody. Okay. So, you know, through the years, it has definitely changed. Our ideal customer profile has definitely changed through the years. It used to just be like an Amazon seller, someone trying to make something at home or source something from China and start building a brand. It's definitely moved uh, up market through the years. And that's mainly because um, of the sophistication and the chances of success are higher when a, when a brand, um, you know, has been doing it a little bit longer or things like that. But think of it as a, a um, anybody that's doing well on their website, but that wants to be on the marketplaces, um, you know, a manufacturer that's never sold uh, direct to customers that has the product, has the pricing, has the capability. Maybe they've been making product for other brands for a long time and they just want to kind of come out with their own private label brand. That's a good fit. Um, brands that have been that are strong in retail that just want to go into e-commerce uh, and even like, you know, smaller brands. Um, if they just have the right uh, the right idea, I guess what I'm saying is it doesn't. It's not necessarily about size. It's about do you have a product, um, you know, that's built that's built for online. Um, that's that's going to review well. Uh, you've got a good profit margin, and and you want to take it to, um, you know, take it to the moon. I think that's the fit. You know, we we focus on branding and good content and good images and. Uh, brand and brand story is really important to us. You might think that there's not a lot of opportunity for brand story on Amazon, but I, I prove you wrong. Um, we've been working hard with the with the uh, within the limitations that Amazon gives us to really help brands tell their story, whether they're a mom and pop shop or they're they're a Fortune 50 company. Um, if you care about brand story, if you care about brand, if you care about quality and doing things right, then you're fit for us. Here's a question that related to, you know, clients and how you might pull somebody away from, say, a, a Walmart or a Home Depot or the mass retailers. What can they do to increase their revenue if they break away or have a separate division that sells direct to customers? Yeah. Online? So I think it's about if you're selling through a website. Uh, or Amazon or Home Depot.com or Walmart.com, there are strategies to help you retain your customer, to keep your customer. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to keep that relationship yourself. So 
you know, manufacturers have never, they don't have any customer relationships in regards to the, the individuals buying their products, but people might've been buying their products from Best Buy or wherever for, for years and years and years. But the manufacturers are giving that relationship to Best Buy when they, when they private label product for them or, or sell through them. So what you're getting is relationship. You're getting the ability to have a relationship with customers if you want. So that's really what you're getting whenever you choose to sell direct yourself on your own website or, um, you know, control the customer yourself. You, instead, you're saying from their name, their address, the ability to talk to them, post purchase, follow up, sell to them again. Um, you're getting that. And I think that is absolute gold um, if you know how to use it. And, um, you know, e even if you're selling on Amazon or Home Depot .com, that's where the warehouse kind of comes in in that 3PL. You can have inserts in there that say, hey come talk to me on my website or my social media or tag you and your kids uh, playing with my product or whatever it is. And that gives you a chance to have a relationship with them also. But I think that's ultimately yeah. what you're, what you're buying with that move is relationship. So the, the profit increase is worth a headache essentially if you do it right. Yeah. It's about controlling your destiny. Really. You know, let's say you're selling everything through home depot.com and home depot.com, you know, decides to stop letting people sell, you know, third party there or, or they have a shutdown or they get acquired by somebody or who knows, you know, that's a big company to go down, but we've seen it happen through the years. We've seen giants kind of, kind of topple. Um, and when you control the website yourself, you control the customer yourself. Um, you, you're in charge of your own destiny, um, you know, for, for how successful you can be. This makes very much sense. I've seen it happen. You know, I know Plymart was a big company when went out during the Oh, nine, Oh, eight, housing bus so big companies do fall how do you find your ideal client what's your marketing strategy um podcasts like this bill um you know i jump i jump on a lot of podcasts uh, i've been a speaker uh since 2018 uh in the e-commerce space uh i just got back from my first trip to europe so i'm international now mm -hmm. um that's that's been a goal of mine just to you know go across the pond and get to talk to amazon sellers there um so that was amazing but ultimately um you know uh, uh start a puzzle podcast uh, is a podcast i'm on um also webinars podcasts like these guest podcast spots speaking spots blogs uh you can find me on linkedin i love posting just kind of my thoughts what i'm what i'm working on what i'm going through on linkedin it's been a great place to just communicate kind of passively um you know, but ultimately, uh, we're, we're an inbound business. I've been doing this 11 years. You know, people know of us. We have a good reputation. We've got good, you know, uh, referring partners that do things in different verticals. We don't do everything. So, you know, but they'll come across a client doing this and be like, hey, we've got to get connect you with Marknology. Um, you know, so it, it's definitely a still word of mouth. And, um, you know, I guess the speaking, the speaking opportunities. <clears throat> You've done a lot in 11 years. You know, I've, I've been cultivating. Uh, uh, extra gigs for 50 years. Ever since I became a dentist, I've always had other irons in the fire, traveling internationally, teaching, uh, running masterminds, uh, strangely enough, drilling oil in Kazakhstan and running a, uh, a lottery in the Ukraine, things like that. So uh, I enjoy hearing that you did get out to Europe. It's not going to be your last time. I can guarantee that. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll have to hear about uh, the lottery in Ukraine and the, those drills in Kazakhstan. That sounds that sounds like it's got a story attached to it. Yeah, I'll, I'll come on the um, startup hustle and tell you how you can fail fast. Fair enough. And, and succeed fast in other places. But there are places that we've been that you don't make any money, but you have a lot of fun. Fair enough. <laughs> well, let's look at the next question of... Um, Marknology, well-defined product and service, how would you uh, list it to the audience, what you do? Yes. So we're a full service uh, marketplace agency. If you're looking to sell on Walmart, Amazon, Chewy, Target, um, you know, Shopify, we are the go-to agency to help you do that. You know, we, from having a kickoff call with our team, meeting everyone to, you know, getting access to being organized. We, we have project management software. We connect. Um, and then we just hold your hand uh, from gra grabbing assets to figuring out where you already are. We do like kind of a deep dive, a discovery of understanding where you are with your business. Usually that's before we're engaged, but 
you know, we've got this discovery process and we figure out where, where we want to push the gas, um, you know, and then we jump in there and everything from, from images, um, uh, to, to SEO copy mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, pricing issues and reseller issues, fraudulent issues, all those types of things like brand protection stuff, whatever it is, if it's around these marketplaces, we, we tackle it. So that's, that's ultimately how we help. And some of those things we can do a la carte and some of them, uh, you know, we bolt on like a team, um, and attach to your team. Excellent. Well, you're going to be a very good resource to the people listening to this podcast. Uh, most of us are involved with at least one or two companies together. And, and some of our coming products that we're going to bring to the world are platforms for e-commerce, uh, O-Market, O-Commerce, um, O-Shop, things that will carry products just like a Shopify or Amazon. So um, you'll be a ready-made source to people to go to who want to put products out to the world. So I would recommend people bookmark this particular uh, podcast for that day you need to talk with Andrew. So that's- I'd love to chat with anybody. That's a, good, that's a good service that you'll be able to provide our group when they get to that point where they need you. And they will need you one day. A lot of people join our group because they want to market products uh, talking about um, products, we have a lot of things that are AI driven. What do you have going on in your uh, industry, your business that integrates AI into the daily workflow? Well, daily workflow mm -hmm. is, is um, you know, a specific question. I would say I'm, I'm working on some software myself around AI, around gathering uh, e-commerce data. And then, you know, with kind of the questions that I ask when I'm auditing brands or trying to figure out which way to go kind of try and take that methodology and, and, and regurgitate it. So, um, you know, using kind of AI in my, in my questions to um, come up with some hypothesis for brands trying to make some decisions. Uh, but we use it in, you know, I use it in email all the time, all the hard combos I don't want to have, uh, you know, a chat GPT or things like that. I've got it in my calendar. Um, I've got AI uh, in some of the software tools that I use around e-commerce. So I wouldn't say, um, I'm obsessed with all things AI, but I would say that I'm definitely um, integrating it into my team, into my tools, uh, and more so like as it's presented to me, um, you know, t taking advantages and opportunities, trying not to let myself get too distracted, if I'm being honest, uh, too distracted by it, but yet being uh, eyes wide about, you know, what it can do to help us. Yeah, I feel the same way. You can spend too much time learning what is out there before you get any work done. No kidding. It's so new, but it's so useful. Everybody who is going to be successful in the future will be using it. That's for sure. hundred uh, percent. Talk about platforms. Do you have a specific platform that you rely on at your company? Yeah. So uh, obviously we, we help brands on Amazon, on the Amazon platform. But if I could say, um, like tools that I use that are that are just essential to what we do. Um, I use ClickUp. ClickUp is a project management tool. It's very robust, uh, just in regards to all the things it can it can track time. It has AI built into it. It has all the integrations that you want from Slack to you know video recording sc screens, SOPs. So ClickUp, I think they're out of Austin or San Diego. Um, they're absolutely amazing. It's like it's just a must. And then. You know, the Amazon platform, which is the one that I've obsessed about for for 13 years. Yeah, well, you grew up with it. It's got to be your yes, sir. main one. So what's the most valuable feature that you like about one product, one platform? Let's talk, let's talk about ClickUp because I think people know Amazon and ClickUp can apply to anybody on this call. Um, it is a way, you know, when I first started out as an entrepreneur, I, I'm generally an artist. Like I was a musician. I grew up in Africa playing music at church, like just all over the place. Imagination goes crazy. Um, but for me to be a successful entrepreneur, I need to get organized. I needed, I needed to get organized. I need to get all the thoughts out of my head into a, you know, into a piece of paper. And so what started as a pen and, and pad, you know, really making lists and notes turned into using some free software to help me organize my notes. And then I was able to move things around on my lists and, get different boards that have my different lists on it. And ultimately I've arrived at ClickUp 
I've just kind of been working through them and finding the best in space to really work with me. I work with, I have an international team as well as international clients. Um, you know, 36 people on the team where communication is, uh, is key to success. And then, you, you know, you multiply 36 people, I'm not saying everyone touches that, but you multiply that by 40, 40 clients and 40 clients might have two or three people on their team. You can do the math of how, how much communication that is by multiplying a little bit. It's crazy. And so, um, you know, you're only as good as your communication to be effective. And so for me, ClickUp uh, helps us stay organized. It, it doesn't hold us back in any way. It's a, it's a software that's getting a lot of touch in TLC. And they're, they're honestly updating it too much. Um, but it has everything we need to be successful um, and to stay organized. Super. Now, the next question follows that. What's the missing feature that you haven't actually seen in that platform that you would like to see added to it? Well, that's a hard one because honestly, this platform I'm talking about just really has all of the bells and whistles. I I, uh, I brought in a business consultant two years ago. They were a firm out of Israel, actually, um, that come in and, and for nine months worked with my team one on one, uh, person by person, uh, leader by leader, and helped us write SOPs, organize our business, all that kind of stuff. And it was really under their recommendation that we brought in ClickUp. Um, so it's been a great tool for us. Um, you know, maybe just the fact that it doesn't integrate into, uh, the other platforms that I'm using like Amazon or Walmart or Chewy, which I know is impossible, but if I have to have a wish list, I think it would be that, you know, I could create tasks right from Amazon into ClickUp. Sure. Yeah. That's a real protected uh, environment right there. I know, uh, talking about, uh, paid digital media, do you utilize uh, much of that in terms of, uh, trying to grow your business? So I think uh, from our technology, it's not the same as an as a, a direct consumer or e-commerce product based business. I think um, it's a huge part, you know, of your revenue if you're on, if you're selling on Amazon, for example. Uh, maybe at the beginning, it's even a hundred percent of your revenue is through paid media, uh, and then it should be going down to seventy percent, then fifty percent, and maybe about thirty percent is a healthy number. It's definitely required to be successful uh, on Shopify or Walmart or Amazon or any of these things. Um, there are exceptions, like if you're a big social media influencer or something like that, you don't have to use any paid traffic. You can direct your own traffic to buy your products. Uh, but generally speaking, paid media is a huge part. I would say probably 30% in a healthy business, 100% in a new business. Uh, with Marknology, I spend very little in paid media. Um, I spend money on podcasting and I spend money on, uh, events, uh, like I'm flying to New York, uh, sponsoring a dinner, um, with a bunch of brands, uh, next week, just getting it like a little mastermind dinner, you know, getting a chance to speak and, uh, you know, network there. That's more of what I spend my, my, uh, advertising dollars on. If I could say they're advertising dollars and less on paid, paid media. Um, but it's a small chunk, you know, I, I cover Google ads and certain things like that, maybe 500 to a thousand a month. So, you know, less than 1%, uh, for me with paid media, but I'm a B2B business and I've built this, you know, a different way than I would be for the brands I give advice to for any commerce. Sure enough. I understand that totally. Uh, so the thing you do that gives your uh, clients five star experiences, any one thing you would identify? Well, we make them a lot of money. Um, I think that gets good reviews. Like when the food's really good, when the service is really good, when the experience is good, you know, when people are making money, they, they're not complaining. Uh, you know, so I think that's, that's number one. That's my fun answer. Uh, besides that, I think, um, you know, we're just, uh, it's not just that we're Midwest, but we are a Midwest firm. We're a family company. Um, we care about what we do. We're actually passionate about what we do. It's not just a money maker for us. We love um working with good people with good products and helping them get them out to the world so i think it's uh you know it's just a mixture of 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 experience and success we actually bring success mixed with uh mixed with a peace of mind because a lot of people navigating amazon the marketplaces it's a stressful experience for them because they're not trained on it they don't know what to do and so we kind of give them that peace of mind that they're in good hands um you know and ultimately just uh high touch white glove excellent Hey, I'll drop a note on you that there's a seven star award for um, excellence now available called the Tech Deer Award. It's brand new. It just went international. It used to be just in Dubai. 
Now they're international and giving the award to companies all around the world. So T A Q D E E R Tac Deer Award. You should apply. T A Q T A Q D E E R Tac Deer. Yeah. Got mm-hmm. it. I'll have to look it up. You bet. Why not be the first to win this seven star award? You know. <clears throat> Sounds like you might have you know an opportunity to do that with your experience and expertise. <clears throat> Is um, let's break away from talking about business and more just talk about you and your motivations, your drive, what really makes you tick. Uh, start off with what are you grateful for today, Andrew? I am grateful for uh, my health and I am grateful for the health of my family um, and the ability to do what I love with the people I love. All good things, all perfectly centered around family. What's your daily like when you get up? What time? What do you do? Exercise? Well, uh, I exercise probably four to five days a week. If I can, I'm in a couple of league sports. So sand volleyball, men's basketball, Mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Anything to get me moving. Um, You know, I start the day a little bit later than than some. Um, You know, I'm up probably around 830. Uh, I'm in CST time, you know, our office hours are actually like 10 to six because we serve kind of, uh, international customers and it gives us a chance to, to hit everybody with those hours. Um, so I'm not in the office super, super early. I kind of get up lit, slow. Uh, I've got a pup, so get him outside, get him taken care of. He's three. He's not a pup anymore, but I just, you know, I see him like a pup. So we start the day just, you know, saying hi, getting a glass of orange juice, a little sunshine. If there is sunshine, hopefully um and then it's getting a coffee on the way in as you can see uh you know and just rolling in with a little time to still talk to everybody that's already coming in the office without just needing to jump into stuff and um it's kind of how i like to start my days just kind of slow and steady i try to stay out of the phone and emails uh until i come in so i'm not running into some emergencies um i've got an assistant that will chase me down if there's anything really bad but I like to start my day just kind of kind of like that versus just jumping into the fire. You sound like you're, you know, at heart, a magician who does not like to get up early because you're up late. And speaking of being a musician and being in a challenging situation, you didn't grow up out in Kansas City. You grew up over in Africa. Tell, tell us a little bit about that challenge. So uh, I, I'm a missionary kid. Um and I grew up, I was born in Montreal, Quebec. Uh, so my parents speak fluent French. Um, and they were, they were studying French to, to go to French Africa. They had a, a calling to, to teach English there. Um, and so from the time I was three, I was in Africa, uh, Cameroon, French Cameroon, uh, in West Africa, and then ultimately Congo as a teenager, the DRC of Congo. I came back at 16 years old. Um, so definitely, uh, an experience bill. Um, it wasn't a, it wasn't a cakewalk. It wasn't, um, you know, a real touristy area in any of those places. It was a war zone in Congo. We were there during a coup d'etat. We were there during a civil war. Um, so an amazing experience in some ways and a life changing, crazy events in some other ways. Um, uh, but definitely came back, uh, with, with gratitude and, um, a perspective, uh, of, um, gratitude toward being an American and being able to get out of that. And just all of a sudden, you know, two days later, live in a very much more peaceful place than where I was. Um, and I think that's, that's impacted my entire life trajectory. Yeah. I can identify totally being a missionary myself in Africa for many years. Kenya was my stomping ground, mostly Tanzania. And, uh, I got to see another side of the world, another side of life. And, you know, people who like yourself experienced it firsthand. It does impact you dramatically to view life here with a lot more joy, a lot more yes, sir. reverence. Uh, what we have here is unparalleled. What Even you, with its challenges and, and its downsides, you know, it's still unparalleled. Yeah. America the beautiful. Uh, what advice would you give your 20 year old self if you were starting over again? Um, you know, I think it would, uh, 
at that time, it was, uh, you know, I probably needed to guard my heart a bit more. I just was only taught how to be vulnerable, really, and just be open with people and be authentic as hell. Um, and picking up the ropes here in, in the U.S. is that's a good thing, but only with the right people. Uh, and so, you know, if I could give my my 20 year old self that it would be like, hey, just go a little slower. Um, and then and then, uh, you know, you have you're young, you have a lot of time, you know, and to just. Uh, well, one, I think I would have gotten to therapy quicker, if I could be honest, I'd say go to therapy, 20 year old self, go to therapy. But uh, also it would just be like, you know, I have less to prove. I think uh, in my young 20s, I just really like, you know, I didn't fit in, it, you know, coming into high school and college, didn't know exactly where I fit in, what was going on. I was trying to just move with the crowd and, and blend in and just try to be like, how do I not stand out and get picked on when really standing out and being yourself is the only way to be successful. So, um, you know, my advice to my 20 year old self would just be, you know, um, Drew, take it easy. You know, you don't have you don't have to to win the world over and, uh, you know, just be yourself and the right people will come to you. Totally understand that. Yes, I do. Um, my brother's actually named Andrew, call him Drew, <clears throat> and he was a missionary in Ghana. OK, so a little connection there, a little little similarity there in our family when your family. What do you want to be remembered for when it's all said and done, Drew? Um, I want to be remembered as being generous. Uh, I want to be remembered as being generous and a kind person. Um, you know, that would have given you uh, the shirt off his back if he could. And that always had the time for, uh, for anybody and everybody. You know, I think those are the things that I'd want to be remembered by. Yep. That's a good, small, but loyal circle of friends that's what we all want how can we support you give us some connection points yeah i would just love to have anybody on the podcast follow me on linkedin andrew morgan's on linkedin um if you know somebody trying to grow their business uh in e-commerce or on the marketplaces like have them reach out i'd love to chat with them um uh, not everybody's a fit you know both ways but i still love talking to people here about what they're working on if i can't help you i know somebody that can and, um, you know, I just like making new connections. Perfect. What about your experience on the show today? Uh, it's been fantastic, Bill. Um, you know, thanks for having me on, introducing me to a new community and, uh, you know, making the questions easy for me. You're certainly welcome. We are 195 countries around the world, including Cameroon. We have a very strong presence in Cameroon, by the way. We're Dr with uh, our friend Charles Osong, who is a native of that area, but lives in the U.S. So we are strongly connected in places that uh, you're familiar with. I want to give you the final word before we come back to uh, our audience. Yeah, just uh, to the entrepreneurs out there, you know, stay focused. Uh, you know, remember your why. It's, it's so hard to be motivated without knowing what your why is, as cliche as that sounds. Keep it first and foremost in your head. Um, you know, and just, uh, be ready to pivot. I think that's, uh, the entrepreneur's lifeblood, you know, so just stay focused and what's going to happen is going to happen. Just be ready to, you know, make changes and adapt where you can. And I think that's the difference of being a good entrepreneur or not. And, um, you know, stay grateful, everybody. It's, it's nice to meet you. Thank you so much for doing that, for being part of our show today. And, um, for those who are listening in the audience, who don't know about what, the Influencer Podcast is all about and how do you get on the show? You may go there by clicking on the um, Freedom Capturing URL and the Freedom Capturing QR code. We have that QR code up on the very top, which goes to my OVU card, highlighting two parts of my life. One is the Influencer Podcast that I do from the website, drbillwilliams.tv. And then also showcasing on the same uh, website, the AI technology that we sell, the SaaS products. And uh, one of them you can use for free to make a QR code of your own like mine. You can make a custom URL like mine. And you can shorten a long URL like mine, all with the same software product called Otrim. And we give away that for everyone for free. 
and also includes trackability of whoever opens the QR code or the website. And it's a, a very valuable product, but it's for free for those who want to take advantage of it. Just go in and uh, join as a register for free and get your download. Now, uh, the other thing that you might want to look for is the bottom, which is a link to our AI technology and all of our many products. The dashboard will send you to look at things like O-Connect, O-Net, O-Mail, things that are going to be industry-leading products as we bring them out. O-Connect is released already to the public, and O-Connect is a uh, video streaming, video conferencing platform. So we want to recognize that that's available now. And if you want it, then you can get a free trial for 14 days. Andrew, great job today being an expert in the e-commerce sector. This, this particular podcast will be very popular among our group. So I want to tell them again, if you're listening, even put a uh, star next to this one and keep it. Go back and refer to it when you need somebody to help you with O-commerce and O-market. It's Dr. Bill Williams on the Influencer Podcast saying we'll see you on the next show. Stay tuned for fun and games after the eclipse.